Well, hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves just one question, what happened today, and what does it tell us about the coming ones? Do a show four times a week, Monday through Thursday. It's broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. As far as what happened today, well, it was a down day. Uh, we've had like a little two-day pullback. They actually cut the losses quite a bit by the end of the day, so we had a bounce back. We'll look at the charts and see that. We had some pressure uh, in the oil sector again, down 3%. Uh, it seems to be no bottom to that uh, sector at this point. Gold, same thing, down another uh, 0.83 or, or 0.8% almost. Uh, and that was about it, right? So some pressure on commodities pressure on the indexes but they bounce back and then oh also the TLT the bonds we're going to look at that as well so let's pop in here and take a look at these charts there's really just two or three things to to look at here in terms of what's going on in particular uh, the first thing to note is on the S&P is that little reversal that took place today so if we're looking at this and we're drawing it in right and we're saying okay this came across came into this level and then jumped back up what did it come into that made a difference well it got close to the high of the low that's the first thing to note right which is where the volume is but it didn't actually get into it so was there something here that turned this around on this particular chart we don't see it so barring that what are the characteristics of this pullback today well, first of all, it's kind of like a hammer reversal, so that's the first thing you should note. And then if you look at it compared to the volumes last week, you don't have the volumes. And if you compare it to anything, you compare it to this little confluence of these two bars, right, which actually had more volume. And then say, oh, well, you know, it went into this area, couldn't hold it down. In other words, the sellers kind of disappeared, and therefore this thing wants to turn and run back up. So that's the S&P. Now there are some, some contrary indications to that, but if we look at just the indexes in absolute, you know, absolution, just those, NASDAQ, same thing. NASDAQ gets under the big bars low, gets back over it, closes, has less volume. That's, that also gives you the same sign. If you look at the NDX, same sign there as the NASDAQ. And if you look at the Russell, Russell comes into the low, the high of the low has less volume. So that, that bar there is, 126, uh, excuse me, 12.26.41, you get into 12.24.87, you have quite a bit less volume, flips it around. That also was the low over here of the high volume low back at that time. So Russell looks like it's doing a reversal. So from the indexes itself, it looks to me like a reversal. So if we narrowed our re read to just that, that would be the signal. Now, if we flip over to Europe, we actually have declining volume, right, on rising price. That's usually not a good sign. But then again, you know, you've had a straight up rise here, so you can't gripe about it. That's pushing up to what? It's pushing up to try and test these highs. And right now, there's nothing in the cards here to tell us it's not going to make it up there. So at this particular point in time, even though you've got this kind of a, what people like to look at as a bearish wedge taking place, Right, so far there's no signal that it's going to fail. And until you actually get into these highs and you're not quite there on the CACs, uh, you are, you know, you are back here, excuse me, let me draw that lower. You are back here, of course, into it from this bar. Uh, you don't have any signal here yet that this is going to fail. Now, the only thing that I would be looking at that might give us some sort of a signal with respect to that is if we actually had a failure at this price point because that was the bar off the highs right that's where we failed again when we came into it and that's this high volume bar right there so that would be the signal that's a little bit higher that looks to be the go-to trade right now uh, pressing up to that area if we look at the DAX same sort of thing going on here and the DAX actually got pushed up pretty well if you look at the, what happened today in terms of economic numbers you had good economic numbers comparatively coming out of Europe but you didn't have that in the U.S. for the most part. Uh, it was okay in the U.S. And then if you look at the ISM wasn't, the PMIs were. And if you look overseas at China, it was worse than expected as well. So P 
PMI wise, there we actually had data today that other than Europe wasn't that great. Now, pushing back to Germany here and looking at Germany, it's coming into this high volume breakdown bar again. That's uh, it's actually not high volume, but comparatively it is. It's 11,409. Where do they get to today? 11,443. So they're over it. You want to see them hold it another bar, and then you can test into uh, these higher levels. So right now, you know, when I look at these, this looks uh, constructive too, just like we saw a second ago uh, in the uh, uh, the CACs. If we go to Asia, right here, these guys can't find their way off the floor. They certainly aren't selling down. That's the Hong Kong. They're not selling down, but at the same time, they can't seem to push higher. So still a question mark here in that lower volume bars that we were talking about I believe last night's show 36.33 was the lows today it close it trades into those and closes under them so at this point you know all that's saving this is the fact that they're dojis otherwise this looks to try and trade lower so if we look at Europe it kind of supports our index is saying hey we can try to go higher if we look at Asia it's not telling us that let's go to the Oxbard boards though because that's where the other tails lie and we're gonna look at two things here one is the TLT the bonds bonds got to push up they got volume coming into them today they're coming after these swing point highs volume over there is 7.8 volume on this one 11.7 you're coming into it with 11.7 so you got the volume you're gonna push you're gonna to try to push over them tomorrow if you pull over the weekly chart and look at the weekly chart what I talked about last night was more than likely going to try to get into this high. That's 127.68 to get into it. You need to get over this resistance zone. It got into it today. There's a swing point high here at 124. That looks to be the target. So as we're pushing up, we seem to be getting the volume we need to actually continue the push. The other, and that is constructively good for the TLT, right, for the bonds, for the interest rate uh, curve. Um, pushing it back up, bonds down, uh, but that's not particularly good for the market. At least it hasn't been recently. The other story is over in the, in the uh, UUP, which is the dollar index. Dollar index, remember, on Friday tried to trade down or actually gapped down, flipped around immediately and traded all the way back up. This still looks like it's going to go after these swing point highs. So dollar bonds not telling us the same thing as the equity markets are, so what does that say? Well, that kind of tells me that we are probably going to get that bounce tomorrow. But once we get that bounce, we may be just finding sellers again. That's it for tonight's show. Thanks for joining me. Have a great one. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.